Uh, chatters. Good morning. It's been for the people gathering. It's after 11. This coffee don't got cold. I don't like my coffee cold. Mm. Let me see here. Turn this down. Yo, I came across something this morning that made crap me up so bad. Like, I can't even bother. I'm going to have to send it to you. That thing killed me. Let me see if I can find that. Um... Wait, let me see. Oh, that's gone. Hmm. Chad is good morning. Let me see. Let me go on Facebook. No one's on here yet. Wait, let me see. Oh! Let me see. Hold on, I gotta wait. But, hold on. Chatters, how y'all doing? I hope your day is well. I hope your day is well. I don't know if y'all see, but... Y'all see that video with the woman in the Sanctus airport? I got Willie with me. Yeah. Brought me coffee. Um, I said we can go and live together. We can talk to the people together. Um, but anyways, um, for those who you know, I put a video, but I remove it because that video is just like it's so. That woman is naked. I feel bad. I ain't trying to have that woman <laughs> out there. Yeah, she naked. I should probably. I can show you. I'll probably on the live, but I don't even think it's um. It's very. It's very crazy. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on, Chatters. Give me one second. Don't hang, don't move. Let me watch you in the video. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. All right, hold on. Let me show you in the video. Come here. Me when you send it to me on the phone. This all happened at the airport? This happened at the airport. This lady, um, she, uh, listen, I don't know. They said she had a mental breakdown, but to me, that lady looked like she could have took something. And my thing is this. Who give that woman the lizard tail? Like that me want know. Who gave that woman the rosy cozy doozy? Why you do it? Why you do that? Because that woman opened her front in a way I have never witnessed in life. Hold on. Oh, yes. <laughs> no way in the hell is it <laughs> What is that, knife? She's peeing. What? She's peeing. Oh. She's peeing right now. Look at that. Oh my God. Jesus. She gotta be on drugs. Oh, we gotta like, we gotta pause this for a minute. She gotta be on drugs. Oh God. What do you think about it? She gotta be on. She she gotta be on drugs, man. I'm just saying, like this. Yeah, I just. I don't think that's a mental health thing. I just think like this. Gosh. <laughs> I think that she definitely probably is on something. Um, because this is typically very crazy. Like when I look at this scenario, she getting naked. She And then at one point she started grabbing at one of the officer's penis area. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> let me show you. You know, we're going to watch the video. But guys, honestly, you got to be careful. I don't know if she took something. But you really have to be careful what you take because I know that a lot of people are taking the molly now. A lot of people are involved in that type of thing. And I want you to be careful, guys. Please don't 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 run around yeah. taking pills. Not not only that, but like the whole fentanyl thing too. And um I know it's like it's not just like coke they're putting it into. I know I heard that you get 
laced that in with weed. So just like, just be careful. It's it's, it's a lot of money. Molly now though. They say it's a lot of Molly. That stuff is crazy. But you know what? Let me pause it for a moment. You know what though? What what I didn't understand is why was no one there equipped enough to take this woman down? Like a skip move, restrain move, like professional skip move. Like to me, I would have I would have I would have been able to take her down by myself without the nails, of course. But I could have I could have restrained her where she couldn't move because there's professional moves you get trained to do that restrains individuals that are mentally ill. You understand what I'm saying? And you have to work with them with are violent to the staffing that people, you know, that they work with. So when I think about it, why none of the strong back man them weren't able to restrain her? Or at least two of them hold her down. I understand I don't I don't know but she went on for like forever before they were able to even I don't know. Well I wonder when, when you see that just know. move when she was going like this, I was wondering like if uh did she had a knife on there. I mean it's many re I this could be a couple of things. I mean like once she a woman, two like you in the airport, you trying to you gotta you know, you certain things you gotta tiptoe because you try you try you don't wanna get your lawsuit or whatever. I, I like I don't know. But but that's that's wild, you know? I don't I don't know guys. Guys, I don't know. Let me show y'all. I don't know. And they have guns, and they have guns. Jesus, they have a super <laughs> No, I'm just saying they have guns and tasers and stuff. Oh my god. Switch this, the the kind of kind of say, say this more like a, from a spiritual side. Mm -hmm. Remember how you tell me about like spirits and everything? I, yeah, I do the, the labels on drugs, but when you tell me like spirits and stuff come from drugs and all that stuff, you know, well, and stuff like that that kind of make me. Well, a lot of people can be influenced by demonic energies, you know what I'm saying? And when you deal in drug use, that's you opening doors for demons to have their way with you. Because most people will tell you when they go on trips mm -hmm. and what they see. And some people, when they eat the marijuana in the, um, maybe in the Skittles form or like cake form or brownie form, some people will tell you it trips them out. And they start seeing stuff. I have had people close to me that had, you know, moments where they accidentally eat stuff. And they tell me they see this and that. I just feel like it's attached to, you know, demonic energy at times. Because I'm not saying every time you people get high, they see demons. But honestly, anytime people get high and then they start doing unusual stuff, I always i am inclined to think that you are influenced by it another energy because sometimes people block out and they don't even remember like what they do they don't remember what's going on and even for this particular lady i feel like she's completely naked yeah and just is oblivious of her nakedness it's not normal but also certain levels of drug like if you take it it trips your brain out it trips your brain out. And it doesn't always necessarily mean it's a demon, but it changes every the chemical balances in your brain. It changes the body. It changes everything about you. That's why when people take Molly and stuff like that, they'll take it for specific reasons. During sex or like ecstasy. During sex because it gets your body doing certain things that it doesn't do naturally every day. Yeah. Well, I'm dead it.
wago wa muma ali fi ba die um what's up darling latoya what happened there me there but i just i just sang says airport you know the incident that is going viral of the young lady the young lady that's having a episode <laughs> Father God, I'm gonna hold you. What's up, my darling? From Las Vegas. She's a dentist from Las Vegas. Miss Cat. Yes, yes, Mac, how are you, darling? Let me tell you something. I tell people all the time anything can happen to anybody once you are considered and called a human being. Because I've seen people, I've seen people, honestly, in this life, go from being what people considered stable, mentally stable, good people, educated, and for whatever reason, they have something happen to them, or they take something or whatever, and they just completely go crazy. So, we don't know... Um, Everybody's situation is different. We don't know necessarily what can cause that. I know that a lot of times when people do have real mental breakdowns, that's one of the big ones too. Because I told y'all, you know, I've brought, I've interviewed before on this platform, you know, Little White. And y'all see her on the platform. And if you, it's pinned at the top of my page where she tells her story. She had one of those situations um, years ago. This woman... Had money, typical Jamaican, work, have everything, take care of family. She had, a, you know, in the family, top dog, do things, you know, build houses and all kind of something. I mean, doing a lot, doing a lot. And, um, because sometimes too, when you are not taking care of yourself and you're not doing self-care, you can have mental breakdown. You completely doesn't, don't know anything. You lose everything. You give it everything. And I remember when you do everything, you lose your mind. She completely, after a while, lose her mind. And anytime you're in a place of vulnerability like that, because believe it or not, whether you got God or, God or not, a lot of Christians or a lot of believers or a lot of people in the world don't think self-care is important. You understand? They don't think um, taking care of yourself is important. Miss Cyrus, what's the Google eyes for? But I see that you're watching. They don't think um, they need to go, you know, get help if they're feeling themselves going or struggling with things. So they just go on, go on, go on and go on, go on. But even God wants you to take care of yourself. God wants you to stop a moment. Go ahead and get that massage. Hey, Ingrid, baby, how are you? Go and get your massage. Get your nails done. If you have a husband, take time out to go to the hotel with your man. I mean, this ain't my man. <laughs> but I'm saying, take time to go to the hotel with your man. Go rub each other down. Take time away from church. Uno act like I say. God is a fool. God, God wants us to have balance as people of God. How are you doing, Brown? Because when you're looking at the thing, you know, think you can't pray on your way out of madness. You cannot. Pray your way out of tiredness. You cannot. You got to rest. To pray your way out of you not taking care of yourself. No, God says, sit down. And if you're doing ministry and you're not capable because you're, you're burned out, you go to church, go ball off of the people, them. You go to the church and you just harsh, harsh at people and you just nip at them when you're not rested. Let me ask you. Say you come from work. And you work all night. Because he's an overnighter. You understand? Big up yourself, Meryl. You work, you're an overnighter. It, all right, when you start your job initially, the first point at night, what time do you start your job? Oh, all night at night. All right. How do you feel in your body at that time? Um, 
I, at times, like, I feel exhausted. I mean, I feel exhausted, but I'm all drunk on my caffeine, so I could still keep going. But even, if you, like, Saturdays, me, um, me and Anique, we clean up the church every Saturday. There's times where, like, I, I tell her all the time, like, it, like, as soon as we get done, I we have to go to that church immediately get it done because I still got juice in me to get it done. Once I hit that bed, it's a wrap. I'm tired. There's times where I hit the, I, I, I'm late. I got home. She's doing something. So we have to, so we have to move church to clean up at like 12, right? I'll lay down and I'll just go to sleep and she'll clean up by herself. Why? I, like, I'm knocked out sleep and I wake up like, oh, snaps. Yo, I left the knee hanging. But like, but I'm, but I'm exhausted because I've been giving it, um, given a lot. Mondays is, is hard for me because, um, because Monday, like, it's Sunday. I wake, Sundays, I, like, Sunday through Monday, I wake up at, I want to say on average, maybe like 8, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I don't, I don't take a nap. Uh, so, like, I, I'll, go, I'll go through that day straight through. Before you know it, I'm up for a full 24 hours. And by then, I'm beat. I'm tired. But the point, too, is at 9 o'clock at night, you have a little bit more strength than you do at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You understand? At 9, at, if I'm going to work at 10.30 on an overnight shift, right? I got more strength when I go in. I'm caffeined up. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take the day on, right? But when 6 o'clock hitting, 5 o'clock hitting, 7 o'clock hitting, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, you're feeling, the, the feeling is different. Peter, good morning, love. The feeling is different. It's like a, such an exhaustion that comes down on me. So we have to rest. We have to rest. So now if I get up and I don't rest and I go to church or something and I'm exhausted and you want to say, Sister Anique, let me talk to you for a minute. I'm going to be like, ah, oh, God, you know what? I don't want to talk right now because I'm tired. All of a sudden you start, you, you're starting to respond to people and then a person might think, oh, why she got an attitude? And it's not because you want to have an attitude. It's just because when we are not rested, we can't even do our business and we cannot do God's business. Being tired and not taking care of yourself, not taking time out to love on yourself. And we were having a great conversation this morning, guys, about insecurity. That's why we did, we did brought my coffee and, you know, we got together and we just begin to talk and begin to pour into each other. Because I tell you guys about Willie. I'm no, I've been friends with Willie since I've been 16 years old. I am 34 now. We're going to hit solid hard. Boom. I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit that 40 solid. Boom. You understand? But, this is, um, just, I can honestly say you're like one of my most integral friends. Like you're one of my friends. That's like the level of respect and honor I have for a man like Willie is so good because we have experience. We have time for one another. Um, and now we go to church together. So no. We can do God's business. And Willie wasn't raised in the church. I was. So really, Willie was never a church guy. He's just getting, you know, into church more, you know, and stuff. But I was raised into the church. I knew more about church stuff. So, you know, as my friend, I kind of, you know, let him know stuff that I know. But we've always been talking, hanging out and stuff like that. And y'all know Willie's the only person that be coming over here and everything. So... For Willie and I, we do a lot of pouring into one another to encourage each other as young people because we realize that even in our church, I think it's only you and I at, that is our age gap. Is it? Mm, well, well, who else in the church? Brianna. No, like, oh, well, Bri Bri I forgot what well, Brianna just got back. Mm -hmm. So I would say Brianna. So like three of us. So just to show you, like, we don't have a lot of people with age, so we try to sort of like encourage each other and sort of like try to be there for each other spiritually and, and just in any other way. Because if me day and me can't do something, I will really come help me same way. When you see Willie and we do ministry together too, with the Chicha TV thing, Willie is rocking with me all the way. Y'all know how it is. Miss Pauline, how are you? Good morning. But this morning, particularly, you know, Willie come over here and we just, we didn't, I didn't plan for a conversation. I just got the coffee and we here and stuff. And I just begin to talk to him and begin to build him up because, you know, Willie have mentioned this on my platform before on an interview for those who have been rocking with me since YouTube days. It's on YouTube. Um, a clip of it is on YouTube. And I think a clip of it is also um, on Facebook when you had talked about some of the things you got, you struggle with you know, as a man or as a friend and stuff like that. And one of the things for him was insecurity. So we got into that conversation and I just began to encourage him and 
give him nuggets of affirmations um, that he can use in his life. Because sometimes when you have insecurity, it's usually from childhood of certain things you have endured, certain things you go through. And I'm going to ask you, do you feel like your insecurity is from childhood? Um, yeah. I, yeah, I wanted to say uh, from my teenage years, go, like go, going on up, to be honest with you. Um, and I feel like everybody has insecurity, don't get me wrong. But some people have an insecurity issue. Like, it's deeper for them. And it's a struggle for them. You know what I'm saying? You might go out on a date with a lady one day and, you know, you're insecure on the date because you're like, oh my gosh, she's so gorgeous. It's my first date. Like, that's normal. You get a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of insecurity. You know, maybe she looks top tier and you feel like you're not as top tier as her. Sometimes you get a little bit of, you know, insecurity. But your level of insecurity over the years was just, was deeper than just regular insecurity. And it affected your life in many ways. You want to talk a little bit about how insecurity has affected how you move? Um, yeah, well, well, my, well, my confidence, for example, I'm going I'm to use myself, like, talking to a lady, um, at, like, I didn't think I was, like, like, good looking, I, I didn't think I had a good game, it was a time, it was a point in time where a lot of times I would just buy love, like, if I just, you know, like, if I, if I just, like, um, buy a girl this and that, always be there, like, I figured, like, that, that will, uh, that will get me a long way. I used to get jealous where uh, where I would see like some dude who's like a player and whatever he like this dude you know he you know he go in and girls left and right and and he would get play and this guy's like you know he only he only there for like the fun time but then me here I am I feel like I'm being a gentleman uh, and at times I I feel like a sucker. So. Yo, so so think about as a man, you know the world tells you. This is what a man is supposed to be. This is what a man is supposed to do. If you are a man, you got to get the ladies. And that pressure of feeling like you got to get the ladies. And if you don't, you know, sometimes people are not taught. So if you're not given confidence in your household growing up as a child, usually sometimes as a man or as a woman, you might not know how to approach somebody. And you might not know the correct verbiage to say. You don't know if you're going to say the right thing. You don't know if the girl's going to be turned on or turned off by. You don't know if the guy's going to be turned on or turned off by. So insecurity is a big, big thing. So for me and Willie, you know, our relationship, you know, is not built on any insecurity. But I see insecurity in my brother in ways where I'm like, okay, no, you are a good guy. No, you don't need to change. You being a gentleman, not because you may feel like a sucker because you didn't make the play you wanted to, to make. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't change those good things because a real gentleman, a real man that a real woman considers good, in spite of the insecurity, a woman loves that. A woman loves when you do open the door for her. A woman loves when you do respect her. You know what I'm saying? So what I do. I teach him how the ladies be. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I be like, yo, let me give you some game how ladies be these days. Okay? You know, and we just role play. And we have the authenticness of our relationship where we can do that. We can play the little game there. And we can't say, Willie, all right, if I was a girl in the streets and I was this, doing this and doing that, you know, and I come to you and I say this and I say that, what would your response be? What would you say to me? What would you say, you know? And we just play it out. And if I feel like he says something that I feel like he shouldn't say, then I'm like, I will make a suggestion to say, all right, what about this? What about this? Because sometimes, you know, you can grow up in a household and you may, you may see your daddy getting females, but he ain't coming to you telling you, well, this is what you do to get females. You know, he's not giving you an instruction manual on how to get females. So if somebody doesn't like really... I show you the vibes of how to do those things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're just, you're just shy about it. You're not sure if you're going to say the wrong thing. So I always said to me, okay, don't let that insecurity from childhood define who you are today. Because to me, when I look at my friend here, that's a handsome black man. When I look at my friend, he's healthy, he's <laughs> strong. You know, kind-hearted, loving and caring. So there's a protective factor that I got in my heart for him that I don't want nobody to just come try to play in his face. Because this one right here, I'll fight for this one, for sure. You understand? So 
I usually see, you know, certain patterns of insecurity that I feel like, you know, we have to make sure when it comes back, you talk to yourself, you affirm yourself, you make yourself know that whatever happened, whatever you went through, it doesn't define who you are now. And look, you succeeded on everything that you thought you was insecure about and you're doing better. So we had such a good conversation about insecurity. And sometimes let me tell you something. Personality types are different. God really gifts us. This man have the gift of kindness. Honestly, he has the gift of, how would I put it? Helping, helping hands. This man right here is always willing to help, always willing to dedicate and sacrifice. That's a gift within itself. But even with giving and helping others, you don't, do it without wisdom. You don't do it willy-nilly and everybody come your way, you're giving to them because the devil will send his people too and God might have not assigned you to give a gift to the devil. You understand what I'm saying? So in everything we do, we have to ensure our decency and order. When you have friends and you, you see friends struggle with things because I struggle with things, right? And you're more an extrovert, I'm an extroverted character. I'm more of a, um, an empowerment type of personality type of girl, right? So you catch me, you know what I'm saying, doing and encouraging other people. You catch me for the 90% is willing to build up people, right? If God met me with that gift there, it is only for me common sense to pour that gift into my friend. When I see him struggling in certain areas. You understand? Do you feel like our relationship um, have an effect on your level of insecurity? Like you say, if our, if our relationship has a... Like our friendship, like, do you think like since we have been friends, you have felt... Do you feel build up? Do you feel like I build you up? Do you feel like you have less insecurity being around me? Do you? How do you feel? Yeah, no, I feel good. In fact, yeah, you know, let me tell you something about her. Um, Anik is the type of person for me, and, I, and, I, and this is why I appreciate with, with her. She's the type of person that she would tell you what you need to hear, not what you want. So, um, there's times where she be, she go in me, she curse me out, and I and I need it. Like sometimes, and she can tell by my facial expressions, like. It'd be like, it'd be like, yo, I got him. Cause she, she knows she's talking the truth. But, uh, but yeah, man, I, I appreciate that with her. My, and, and with my struggles as far as like, um, doing things for people, you don't mind if I talk about your back? Like the. Oh, no. I, oh, oh, no. Uh, uh, oh, no. Uh, huh? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my back, yeah, my back hurt. Yeah, oh, when my back oh, hurts. Okay. She has this, um, so sometimes it, it, it could be sore, right? And, um, and she and she really trusts in the Lord to do stuff, right? Be so but, but at times, like oh, God. as she's saying that, I am up here game planning, game planning how like like I'm I'm literally looking on Google stretches and stuff like to, to help her. But this is what I mean by like giving because you know, this is my friend. Like I'll like I'll I'll do things. But the, but I, I bring that up to say like um like I don't like to see people, especially her. I don't like to see her struggle. And um, and sometimes you can't just save everybody. You know what I mean? That's where that's where the Lord comes in. That's why she trusts the Lord. So that's where you know I got to sit back. That's you know, the Lord's battle. Like he's a helper. Beans that his gift is a is a helping gift. He wants to always find a way to fix the problem for me. He want to Anik your back at you. Me, you want a back brace? You want the pills? You want yeah. this? You want Anik? Me, I come, honey. I said wait. All right, buddy. I got ibuprofen. I just pop a couple. I got my back brace on, or I'll say, don't worry, give it a minute, I have everything today, or if I need something, I'll say, yeah, you know what, bring that, that will work. He does that for me, um, for if I'm sick, anything like that. That's why when I'm here and I cook the food, I give him his food. And then every day I cook, but if I cook that food, I give him his food out of it. And if he bring me anything to cook, I give him his food, cook it and give it to him. There's nothing he cannot get from me. Because if in my lowest and sickness, one time I remember I was in so much pain one time and I just barely could just budge, you know, barely could budge. And I'm telling you, this man 
was willing, if he had to, to stay in the house to make sure I'm okay. And you cannot have man in your house because you cannot, you don't know some people or they are. But this one right here, I don't have to worry about violation and disrespect. I don't have to worry about nothing. I just have to sit down and chill out and he will help me. You understand? So when you have your friends and you are stronger in one thing and they might be stronger in the other, build each other up in that area. If I see you feeling insecure, I'm going to let you know. And there's some days I give it to him hard. There's some days I go up on him and I'm like, no, the devil is a liar. You are everything that God called you to be. You are a royal priesthood in the holy nation. And I said, we're going to uppercut the devil today. And we're going to just yell about it and confidently speak that thing out. Sometimes you got to shake it out of your friends because you love him. Because you don't want to see the devil have their mind. You see, so long the enemy can have you always sitting insecure, you can never be confident to do God's business. God's people trust in the Lord. They trust in him. So when they walk in confidence, it's not even in their own confidence. It's the confidence of the Holy Spirit. So that's why we ought to be filled with God. Because he's going to give you that nature to change your insecurity. To make him use you for his glory. Because he know what you struggle with. He know what I struggle with. Listen, I'm a big mark bandit. Okay. If it was up to an eek, I wreck fire. You understand? But even with that, God is so good. Because when I ask God to... Adjust my gift accordingly. He starts to convict me of things and tell me about other things. You need to adjust that. You need to change this. You need to change that lingo. You need to take that out. You need to get rid of. You understand? Any relationship you're in, you have to be willing in that relationship. Friendship, you're there building up. In your relationship with God, you say you want more of God, but you're not willing to change the thing that God is telling you about. So, whenever insecurity rears its ugly head, and it always will, because we always will fight a battle till the day we die. Every battle we fight now might not be the same battle we fight 20 years later. 20 years from now, it's another battle you and I will fight, and everybody on this life will fight. But all I want to do now is when I'm in the vicinity of people that I'm Closely, close with and relational with and intimate with. Intimate. And when I say intimacy, we're not talking about sex. <laughs> we're not talking I'm about sex. Because <laughs> most people think intimacy has to do with in-course and it's intercourse. And it's not. It's not got nothing to do with intercourse. It's got to do with, when you think about intimacy with God, it's spending time. Quality time. You understand? Quality time. Taking time aside and being conscious and intentional about it. It's with intent. And in my relationship with you, it's my intent to make sure I build you up where you struggle. Even if it's a day that I got to come and say, hey, I'm going to come on that day and say, hey. and if it's another day that I have to come and put my hand and say in the name of Jesus, then that day I will put my hand and say in the name of Jesus. If it's another day I got to put the shoes on his foot because that's what he needs today, I'm going to go put the shoes on his foot. So you will play different roles in my life and you will fill different gap and I will do the same. It's a pour in and a pour out. It makes the relationship balance. And if you have sex in the relationship that you're claiming to be pure, you will taint that. You cannot say you want to have a godly relationship and you're sleeping um, and violating the bed or lying about it. You cannot because before you know it, that's the only thing that comes to people's mind. It's sex. That, uh, when you're looking in their face and giving you counsel, you're thinking, oh, I want to get down and dirty. <laughs> they're talking to you, giving you counsel, you're looking down, they dress like, oh, you're trying to, what you got down there? Oh, that's cute. You know, your mind pretty much is what I'm saying, is going into a whole nother direction because intimacy for sex is involved in that relationship. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't fraternize, period. You understand? And that is why I don't mind 
you know, introducing you to the channel. I mean, the channel know you for a long time since YouTube days, but I don't really bring people on the channel like that. But everybody see Willie right through. You see Willie right through when we're doing everything. You see right through. But I want you to not be afraid to or to speak. I want you to not be afraid to ask questions or to express any idea you have in your mind, even about this topic, because I know you are the best candidate to talk about what it feels like to struggle with that and how hard it is to get out of that mindset. Is it hard to break? Is 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 is, is insecurity overwhelming for you at times? Um it's a I wanna say it's an on and off battle. Like so like some days I feel good or some days where I just feel you know, you get your, you get your you get your lowest, and sometimes you want to be you know you you get sometimes like for me, I tend to go down a little bit of a of a dark path because I I start dabbling in things I I shouldn't be dabbling, and I'd be like you know I I you know I want to be like I want to do this because everybody else do this I want I want to be kind of like them but it's not meant for me. You tell me this all the time like Will. You you walk into a trap. Don't be going. Don't be going there. Sometimes I, I I'll be real, y'all. I will be hundred percent real though. Sometimes I, most of the time I, I don't want to listen to her. I know she's talking to you. <laughs> I don't want to listen. But it's a battle between like back and forth, the good side and the bad side. And I I, I know I'm not alone in this feeling, but I'm just putting it out there. Like I do, I struggle with that. It, you know, temptation is is real, and um. And I get caught up. She'll tell. I'm glad that she just should tell me the truth, and she yells at me about it because she don't want me falling in that trap because she care. It's not that like when you say somebody, it's not. It's not. It, you know, if you try to not pop somebody out the uh, out the way of a truck, ain't no nice way to do it. Oh that's yeah. What, that's what oh she does yeah. If the if the semi truck is coming, yeah. Anik's gonna be like, bam! I'm gonna jump up, yeah. like bam, and save you. I don't care if you break your leg. I don't care if you break your hand. I don't care if you break your neck. I just as long as you live. As long as you live. I don't want you to break your neck and die. But I'm just saying, if it is of that great of a need, mm -hmm. I would make that effort. It's important. And guys, not because Willie's saying, you know, I will tell him these things. Don't think that I don't struggle with the same issue. G don't get it twisted. Guess what? We're both young people in the church. And we are both, I really didn't grow up in the church. So, you know, he's learning now about church and stuff. I was grew up in the church, but I never lived no life because I, I did, I live my whole, I do, I've always lived how I want to live. I never really care. I just do me. You understand? So I always tell you, you know, I'm a church baby. I understand everything. And I always love God and I've always honored God. But I just knew that I was a serious about God. You understand? For a long time. I was never serious about God, you know, in a, in a more intimate way. I always loved him. I've always respected the things of God. I never really style God on him something there. But me, never when they commit for him. I wasn't committing really to try to change and to try to work on myself. Yeah. I never cared. You know, can I talk to my, can I talk about my MCG? Do you? Do you? This okay. is a conversation, even, baby. Even with even in the Lord, and, and, I'll, I'll, talking, and I'll, I'll tell coffee. you like this. Um, there was a point in time where um, I I, I want to say I started going to I started to go to church when my um when my brother died. My brother died in in um 2005, and that, and that's why I met my pastor. Uh, but like I I was going to church because I was forced to by my dad's, but. Um, but due to time, due to times, I I got um I started having a relationship with the, with the youth there. I, I was like a young kid when I when I was going, and so I was just going. I was going to church for the people. Now as I get older, you know, there's a point in time where it's like, you know, people get, people get caught with the Holy Ghost and everything and stuff like that. And it's like I'm I felt like I was different from them. I I'm not feeling what they feeling. And there's a point in time where I was I was about tempted to stop going to church. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, I'm saying all this to say, like, I didn't really, I've been oh, going to church for years, yeah. never really took my uh, my walk with the Lord serious until, like, one day I just got super sad, and I got very, very drunk, and um, it's a point where it's like, I kind of, I kind of, like, blacked out in my own house, like, I, I, I like, I remember myself, I, this is how bad I was jacked up, I slept on a bathroom floor, <laughs> because I was, I was sick to my stomach, I, I, vomit and I didn't even remember myself doing that. I just woke up in a puddle full of my mess and I was ashamed. And in that time in that moment I just 
I wanted to have, I just wanted to have change. That's what, and this, I want to say this happened, at least I want to say this was a good four years ago. And that's where, and that's where kind of like my true walk with the Lord began. Now, I still have my struggles with that um, and everything. I, I was just telling Nick earlier, like, um, like even then when my, my, my walk with the Lord is on and it's off. I get tempted by, by things all the time. I, I'm into stuff that I, that I shouldn't be into. And I see what other men do and stuff and everything. And I guess that's the thing of just be being a man. Um... So I, so I, yeah, there I had my insecurities with that because I tell her like I'm not like you and me. I wasn't, I wasn't um, brought up in the church and stuff like that. And a lot of people, but it's no excuse with that. And a lot of people, guys, are not like us, and um, they're not cultured into the church or taught about church things. And we have to be considerate of that. We have to be mindful that not everybody um, was raised knowing. So you. I have to have to there's patience that come in. I'm not gonna hold you. You taught me patience. Yeah. No, dealing with <laughs> Wooly. No, 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 you seriously. Me dealing with you in our friendship, you taught me patience because it, you know, I wasn't used to having people that didn't know about church. I already know was educated in church certain things. And then you have a friend that you're so close to that you're your best friends and you're like, we're having these conversations about God and everything. And I'm like, damn, you don't know everything. You don't know about these things. And I was like, okay, cool. So no, I had to step in to teach the best way I can. And it's not because I know everything, no. But I wanted him to have more of God. I wanted you to feel at least a little bit of what I feel as a young person, even though we we all both were struggling. See, he got into the, his little bit of struggle, but he's not the only one who struggled. You understand? In and out, in and out. Me tell you, I tell my chatters, you know, for all my trained generals, in and out, in and out. But there comes a point where a change has to be made. So, how do you feel about when you feel? You said you felt like that was the beginning of your change with God. Talk a little bit more about why is it the beginning? For you and what it's been like for you now. Um, for right right now, um, you know it's co it's good to admit my problems up, uh, up front and uh, and for ch and um and I I have to say it's just, it's a daily battle. I think you go through the daily battle with things, right? Daily. Yeah, it's it's a it's a daily battle with things. I mean, um. I don't like. I, I can't quote scriptures and all that. <laughs> be honest, not that. yet, not yet. <laughs> but you will. You will. Yeah. Because that's what. As we grow in God, you get more educated in God. As you grow in God, you learn more about the scriptures. And this is why I say, guys, this is why church is important. Church is not important just to prove that you're you're moral than anybody else. Just to get a brownie point that you attended service. No, church is important because that's the place you go get educated about the God you say you believe in. Church is important for those reasons. You you got to go to a place. All right, for example, I'm making some coffee, guys. For example, if you if you say you want to be a Sunday school teacher, or you want to be a doctor, or you want to be a nurse, or you want to be a dentist, what the heck? You got to go to school mm -hmm. to gain that knowledge. You're not going to just get up and have that knowledge, Ruzukuzu just saw, it's not going to happen. You understand? So, that part of the pie is important for people that say they want more of God. That's why I say I can never understand why people sit at home, you don't go to Bible study. You want more of God? You got to take the proper steps to go into the Word, or even when you're home, to read the Word for yourself. Oh, I don't know scriptures. Well, maybe you should try studying them. Because if you want more of something, Chatters, if you want more of something, you and I have to what with intent yes. get that thing. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. I think the struggle for us um, is the in between. The good the, the, the good and the bad. Like you love the Lord, you know, we think about we love the Lord, you 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 do all these things, but there's a side of your flesh that you struggle with every day because Oh yeah. As long as oh, we live yeah. in this world, the flesh is gonna always be here. And I be feeling bad about that, I really do. Sometimes like um like I have this thing this is gonna sound super goofy. Um my thing is like 
I will have this problem like repenting because it's like, like, yo, know, don't play with the Lord's grace. If I, if I ain't really committed, then why am I repenting? It, it's pointless. So it's a, so it's a point where it's like, okay, why? You know, I'm not I'm not even gonna address the issue because I ain't gonna stop. That's a dangerous way. That's a dangerous way to think about things. But it's true. But it's your truth. Yeah. And what I'll say to that. God examines everybody's heart. He knows whether a person wants that change or not. And some people, for example, Sasha. Sasha got on drugs. And y'all know her. That's my best friend in prison, my cousin. She got on drugs. Sasha's a good girl. Never did drugs. When she got on drugs, she hid from us. She didn't want me to see her in that condition. She ran from me because she loved me and she knew. But there was a point that I know she wanted to change, but she didn't have the strength. She didn't have the strength. That is why I don't particularly... exist anymore in a place mentally like in my mind where I bring down the drug addicts or the people that use because I understand addiction. I've been in addiction. And I'm not talking about crack cocaine or whatever. I've never done hard drugs. Never. But like anybody else, I've done weed, cigarettes, all those types of things. But nothing hard. Thank God I never popped no pills. Thank God. La, la, la. Thank you, Jesus. Because God protected me. Because number one, those drugs, even marijuana, are, 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 are those types of substance, pills or whatever, they can be considered as gateway drugs. Many people didn't start crack. Or just go outside and go find a crackhead and say, give me crack, give me crack. No, they don't. They're in a the moment. Maybe they got surgery. And the doctors gave them pills. They got addicted. I know somebody right now. The doctors had to cut them off all the pills because they became addicted. They're always in pain every day after that. Because guess what? Often when the pain isn't there, your, your body craves it. And your body starts to actually physically pain you because you need that drugs in it. These people cannot just stop. Smoking crack all of a sudden. That's why you have treatment programs and stuff like that. To manage and monitor um, and assign proper treatments for people that work for them based, based on the type of drugs they use. Because in our reality, nobody can just quit because the moment you quit, it affects your body. People start to throw up. You can die. You can literally die from that. Because your body has consumed so much, it's gotten used to it. So a lot of people, we can't view them in their flaws as less than. And I'm learning that now. Yeah. That's why I build you up. Yeah. Hey, you know, with Sasha, uh, I, 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 I'm friends with Sasha too. I know J Sasha just as long as I know any. In fact, I, I, met, I met them. To, when I first met her, I met them together. Yeah. They like, they like sisters. They're cousins, but they like sisters. Yeah. Um, I remember, I remember she, I had it. I, I, we talk about this at times. Um, I remember having her in my car during her struggles, and I and I really tried to get her to help. I I, I knew somebody who had ministry uh, with rehab, and I was trying to talk her into it, and she didn't take it. Like sometimes, what I'm trying to say is, we we all knew the 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 stuff that she was into. I knew how bad she was into. I just it kind of break my heart sometimes, like um, the fact that I give her the. I offered to help. She didn't take it. She, I remember her saying that, like, um, that like she felt ashamed. She didn't know. And this, I don't. Um, I, it's, it's sometimes I'd be honest with you. Like, I have the story we talk about it many times, like all of that. But still, I just have trouble understanding that. Let me tell you. Think about it. When we sin, there's a guilt that and a shame that comes with it. And think about the story of. Um, Adam and Eve, when they ate of the forbidden fruit, they hid from God in the garden. Adam, 
Where art thou? God said. And the other song we sing as children. Had him in the garden hiding. Hiding from the Lord. Adam, where art thou? Adam, where art thou? Adam in the garden hiding. He's hiding from the Lord. I learned that as a child. That's scripture. No, he's hiding from God. He covers himself because of shame. Shame. But what people are not understanding is Christ took on the shame that you carry. The shame that comes with sin. Sin is an automatic shame. That's just what it is. Whenever we sin, there's a shame that comes with it because we know we're wrong. We're made in God's likeness of, of his own image. So guess what? There's, he has created us with a conscience, a consciousness to be aware of what does not please him. So whenever you do something that does not please God, the inner God in you, his self that he placed in you, his consciousness that he put in your being as a human, that's why nobody can be God. That's why no matter how scientists try, you cannot give people. You just, that's, why, that's why they create AI and robots. Because they cannot, you know, mimic authenticity like God does. Like God has. Because he has authenticity when he put that in you. So we have guilt. We have shame that come with sin. It's the same thing with drugs. It's the same thing with repentance. We feel bad. And we don't want to let God see us that way. Because deep down inside, we know what his expectations are. Deep down, that consciousness down there. And even if you're a wicked person, you're not even a Christian. People know when they have done wrong. They, however, choose to keep doing what they do. What do you think about that? I had to smile, I had to smile because it kind of it kind of hit me. I do the same thing. It's the same thing. I do the same thing. We just talked about this. We just talked about this earlier because um um I, I, there's something that I just keep on doing, and she just tell me like, well, I'm gonna let you know, but I'm not gonna say anything because you don't keep on doing what you're doing. But like, yeah, it's yeah, I I, I hear it. <laughs> Trust me, don't you know we're and this is it too. I want us as chatters, all of us together. It's almost like let's do a restart on ourselves. Let's do a restart on our mindset and our lives. Just because some of us have been through so much. And our insecurities, our issues are so big sometimes. And it's like they build up a wall in our lives sometimes where... People cannot come in or we find ourselves not being able to get out to people. So now you find yourself just become this person, angry, mad, insecure, protecting your kids more than you need to. You know, your kids can't go down the street because you think everybody's going to take them away. Somebody's going to kill them. Like, I'm not saying it's not a wicked world, but then it becomes you clustering everybody up in your problem now. Mm -hmm. You're making this issue you have, your kids, your husband or your wife. It's important for us to always take a moment to look in yourself and say, guess what? I am not perfect. But you're worthy of building yourself. You're worthy of looking in the mirror and say, I'm a good looking man. It is good for you to look and love yourself. It is good for me to see you and say, brother, how are you doing today? You're good? It's good for me to look on you and tell you something that's going to build your soul. Not to tear you down. And a lot of us have given people our barriers. And it separates relationships in church, outside of church. Our insecurities get the best of us. They're like a choker on our necks. And, 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 and we don't know how to be free. But if we're not open to talk. About them and we're not comfortable. We can't be free. Because if you didn't tell me you struggle with insecurity. I wouldn't have known. Because some people struggle with stuff. And it doesn't show. Many people in the world when you see them. You would never think they're suicidal. You don't see suicide. You don't see lethality or anything like that. Randomly 
on people. You see people thinking that they want to kill. You don't see none of that. Sometimes, that's why people are shocked when people take their life. They shock. Because they say, no, that girl is happy. No, that boy has been helpful. He helped everybody. But before you know it, he's the same guy that jumped off the bridge. What about the pie that wasn't right? Mm. Right, yeah. I remember he said he said that. I remember um I like rock music. There was this one singer from Lincoln Park who um uh, who ended up killing himself and and it's kinda of crazy. I um I remember this listen to a podcast and somebody put up a picture of one of his shows. You know, like you know like they shut the lights, everybody they got they they got their cell phone out, the dark, the, you know, the light and there's a whole bunch of it. He he had the, it was a huge venue and somebody's like, How can somebody like that want want like wanna kill want to take their own life? It just kinda of turns out like um like a couple like Couple like weeks after his death, like I, I find, like I come to find out, like during his life, he got, he, you know, he went to mall, mall station, he got molested by like his, uh, I guess I think like a stepmom, something like that, or whatever, Mighty and God. all this, and and this man had so much hurt and heartbreak in his songs, in his lyrics. You like, you know, you 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 know, you like music, you kind of you boom bop, boom bop, and you listen to it, but then I have to listen to the lyrics and it it kind of. It's getting kind of dark, quite dark, and he, he even wrote many songs of, uh, of stuff like that. We, my God, I just asked God to like help us like on our journey because, um, you know, we don't have a lot of young people around us mm -hmm. as examples or people that are just serving God. So sometimes I look on the internet and I, you know, watch programs where I see young people worshiping, doing worship, doing praise, young people preaching, because that encourages me. Because we're not around a crowd or a big community. We're in a smaller community, so we're not around dynamic people as that. And we don't, I don't run to other churches, so I don't know what they're doing there. You know what I mean? But it's very important that we be there for each other. It's very important that we build each other and we pour into our spiritual walk with God. Because one thing I do know is that we can't keep being talkers and not doers of the word. The thing is, if we do want to be successful in anything, we have to, What back to my earlier point, we be meeting in the, we be in the middle, but we're not crossing over. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes we are just like, we want we talk about over here, we want to do this, we want to do that, and we're right in the middle looking over to the right, try to, because over the right is where success is. But when you look over the, to the right, you have not moved your legs from the middle. We have not take the extra time to invest the work but we keep speaking it out of our mouths as though we are that. We're not that unless you put work to it. Faith without work is dead. You got to believe a thing even though you can't see it. And that's how it is. You know for a fact that things shall be because you believe it. And you are for sure about it. You know, we as people, if we talk about change, if we talk about anything we want to do in our lives, we have to be willing to put the physical work in. When we're walking with God, there's hella issues we're going to be dealing with. A lot of things we're going to be going through in the church, outside of the church. It's important to share them. That's why we have to be accountable to each other. So you don't feel alone. Imagine if you are going to church every Sunday and everything you're struggling with in life, you don't have anybody to ever yeah. let it out on. You know how many times I already told you, like, yo, you, you never, you, you don't, I be telling you, you, don't, you never lived that life before. Like, I be telling that to you. <laughs> you like like I be telling you you don't know what I be going through because it don't because it, it don't happen to you. Like for all um, like like far as like like the biggest thing I said that like, I I remember saying that you don't get rejected by men. <laughs> okay, so all right, let, okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. So you know how he say he struggles with insecurity or whatever. So you know sometimes when men are struggling with that, they they feel like they don't have the game. The, the, the game like other men do, you see me? Like the, the, the game, you see me? Like other men do. Um, for me, will I say I get rejected by men? Absolutely not. <laughs> He's completely right about that. But this is the thing. I don't go around looking for the men for them to reject me either. So that's the thing. 
I've never typically been the dogmatic type of girl. How these men become dogmatic when they go to the club. Now, I'm bringing me home a be tonight. I know I'm snatching up a show in the night. You know, they have an intent. Someone, yes, no problem. You can you can reach me through um, Messenger. Um, but for me, I'm never seeking it. I'm never going looking for it. I've never felt like that's what's going to make me who I am. But you being a masculine character, the world says you get you better get your shoulders. Who you're not a real man. You ain't getting run with the girls and stuff like that. You gotta be a real man. You gotta get a shoulder with you. You know you get you're under that pressure, man. You be under that pressure. So I feel like it's different for you guys than it would be for me. But then too, I was raised different. I was given confidence. I was raised with a woman that's a pastor, a father. That minister just the same. And those confident traits in them, I have been in it all my life. So I've picked up on that. Sometimes if you don't have parents that are those types of parents or somebody that's like, you know, give you tools of, to, to build your confidence, you don't naturally just build it. Some people do, but you, you normally just doesn't naturally build it. You know, you have to be taught, you know, if you're an insecure type of character or personality type. It's not easy. Not everybody was born with with the innate ability to just be confident. Everybody is different. So what I want to do and what I've started doing is adjusting my speech. And my speech still ain't right all the way yet. And I got a long way to go. But acknowledging my gift of gap and that this is where God called me to do and to speak. And I have to filter that. And I am currently doing that. And as he changed me, I'm filtering because my gift can be used, but if it is tainted, it cannot please God. And that's where people's gifts sometimes are um, prostituted because people will be using their gifts out of pocket and out of range. When you're doing things for God, it needs to be purified and it needs to be clean. You cannot do God's business and you go to the, to the pulpit and because the people ain't give no no million dollar in, in, in the offering bucket, you're going to get on the mic and be like, well, I'm the pastor. How dare you not give me money? And you're going to look at him like, what? And rightfully so, he's the pastor. But does he, does he have a right to say that? Is that right? It's, it's inappropriate. Yeah. Very inappropriate. So guess what? My mouth can be very inappropriate. And I know that. So what do I do? Do I sit there with my mouth going to change one day? It's going to get up and just change one day? No, your mouth doesn't change. You're human. You're not going to just change randomly. You have to work on it. If you're a body with cusser, guess what? You're gonna, it's going to be hard for you to stop cussing. I'm telling you right now. If you're a bad word cusser, if you cuss bad word and you're used to bad word cussing, and da -da 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 it's hard to just quit even if, if you get saved right now. It takes a little minute to adjust that. You know how that gets. So guess what? We take our time and we adjust those things. It takes work. Habit take what? They say 30 days to form? I think it's 60 days. 60 days 60 day to form? And if you have that habit, ain't it going to take 60 days to get let go or more? Mm -hmm. So be patient even with yourself. Be patient, chatters, with yourself. Don't beat on yourself and when you struggle. And that's why church people have to find back their place because, because we don't know our place in each other's life in an healthy way. And we are now focused on self, not God. We can't see each other. Because if I was focused on God the way I need to, God would put in my heart my brothers and sisters' needs. Truly, those who, who really rock, rock with God, yeah. he, he show you people that you never saw before. He actually allow you to be able to meet needs you never thought you would have been able to meet before. Um, but when we're not with God, we're not aware. We're more focused on ourselves. Well, I got to do me. I got to get my stuff done. I got to... La, 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 la. And before you know it, years done pass and God ain't used you for nothing. Just saying. Chatters, what do you think? How y'all doing today? We're just having an open conversation, guys. You know, I just want y'all to see the dynamic here. You know, I want everybody to... Continue to build yourself. Continue to remember that you're worthy of love. You don't have to accept anything less than respect and love from people. And even if insecurity is in the way at times, you don't have to allow anyone to speak down on you. 
that's why it's so important that you build yourself enough that when somebody comes negatively to speak to you, you won't put it in your heart because you've already known who you are. That's why over here we have the hot talk, real talk conversation. Vernon, how are you, darling? Commission, baby, Lee, Adeline, and everybody here. You know, that's why we boldly speak confidently because when I talk to you, I don't want to come, well, really, maybe you should be confident. No, I present confidence so you can see like a mirror what it can look like. And it's not because I'm confident in everything. Not everything. I am not confident in everything. I'm not. But in this particular arena with the gift of talk and speech that God has blessed me with, I utilize it for my loved ones too. Those who care for me and stuff. And don't worry, Willie get it harder than everybody else. He told you in the beginning of this live. He really get it. He get, he get every side of me. Ain't nobody in this world that see every side of me but Willie. I swear. Because we have grown such in our really Willie has never always known every side of me because for a long time I hid stuff from him because I felt like he was, you know, he couldn't be able to bear some things, some burdens that I had. I didn't want him because he's such a caring guy. He just, I didn't want him to bear that burden. So I kept a lot of things from him. But I wanted to be more open to you because I wanted to see that even people that go to church got issues. But it doesn't mean we don't love God. And I knew you didn't relate to church folk. So I needed to show you something that's relatable. That's why I opened more about some of the stuff that I have been in and that I've done, even in church or like, you know, that I struggled to, to get out of or struggling to get out of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I kept it real with you as a person, as a young person, because I didn't want your thing say. Me fake. Me never wanted to think I'm phony. And I, because, not because you, you want the Lord doesn't mean you still don't got things in your flesh that you got to work on. So that's, that's me. That's me. That's me, Lee. I appreciate it. Somebody said, well, I appreciate conversation. I need to watch you more often. Thank mm -hmm. you, sisters. It's very powerful. I appreciate my chatters. Everybody in the chat, guys, I love you so much. Anything you want to tell the chatters? Because they like you, know, really. Uh, they like you, know, really. Come uh, on, talk yeah, about the things that man. Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys. I remember, I, I remember one time, she, 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 oh, she talked about me, and somebody said, like, big up the Willie. And I'm like, oh. They know you up in here. I, I really know me. Um, I know me pretty good. I appreciate y'all. I, I really do. You know, one thing, what you said about just, like, judging people and whatever, um, do out that, it kind of had me, um, felt like, have grace and not to judge other people. I think the only thing in here I struggle with, and we heard we talk about this all the time, is where you, is where, is where somebody hurt, like, like, innocent people, far like, like somebody molesting kids or, or somebody just going on a shooting spree and mm -hmm. just killing these people because because just randomly killing stuff. That right there, like I go hard to paint and I just judge people on that. But like um but um I don't know. I, I'll be honest with you, that's the only thing that I um like I can what I'm trying to say is I don't judge people unless like if you were to hurt you were to hurt somebody else. But even then like I'm still trying to figure it out that way. I'll I'll break that I'll say that and uh, Neek always come back her kind of argument is look at Sash. And I and I got love for Absolutely Sasha, but, but, but the but but the reason why Sasha's in jail because she hurt somebody. Yes, Sasha almost killed that lady. Yeah. That lady almost died. Sasha almost killed that lady. When I went to the court with her before she was in prison for seventeen years, that's what that was her sentence. Glory to God that He's releasing her before I decree and I declare that in the name of Jesus. Because God knows her heart. Sasha had a key to Pastor's house. She was a pastor's aide for years. You don't give a key to your house to anybody that's not trustworthy. Sasha has proven herself to be a good person just like you. So none of us has expected that type of fall for her. That is what I'm saying. If Chit Chat get up today and I have a great fall, I have a great fall, is the chat just going to cuss me? Are you going to watch me fall and not come and curse me back in God? Are you going to watch me fall and come kick me while I'm done? Are you going to come and say, Anik, you're the same Anik that was here for me. What are we going to do? So my thing is this, I realized that somebody close to me that I loved, that I knew their life, I knew their reputation, I know where Sasha been, she, uh, we damn near lived together before, while she up here, we've been together, lived together, hold me always, yeah, yeah, that's been night, everything, when me there, nothing, she squeeze while I come on in on me on, tax time, Willie, you know my life back then, and I ain't gonna get into it, but you know, mm -hmm. Because I ain't even shared to the chatters. And I'm telling you something. I am the way I am for a reason. 
And when the time come, people will know. But that girl has been a good example of God and Christianity. To me and to many people in the community. She cook and help the people and everything. Walk the streets with me. Oh. She could be doing it right back. I used to work at, work at that. I can't cook. Yeah. She can cook. And she feed and she help everybody. So when she fell, I didn't believe it at first. Because you couldn't tell me about my Sasha. You couldn't tell me about my best friend. Not her. She's not capable of this. Yeah, she got the, she got the rap on her, but like even but like me and her, we know like intimately know her. Many people could tell you like she was a, she was a sweet. Never woman. went to jail. But, Never did a crime. Know, remember those times when you had Bible study at her house? Bible study like, prayer just, meetings. Yeah, yeah. She hosted the people of God in her house, and she cooked. Hey, hey, that woman, I could cry. I could cry. So when I say chatters, Miss Johnson. Even the good, even the strong fall. So what I say is, I'm not saying we don't have judgment towards people and things that they do. Because if I see you pick up this red cup, I say, Willie, I just see you pick up that red cup. Don't judge me. It ain't a red cup I pick up. I say, well, well, well the evidence says you pick a red cup up. But if you didn't see a red cup, why would you assume it's red? That's the difference. That's the difference. We don't make assumptions of judgment to people. If I am aware of something, because I have witnessed it, not because somebody told me my ears and whisper it in gossip, I can judge accordingly. But if you see somebody do an action and you don't know why they have done it, it's best that you say, God, whatever this is, you intervene. Because you don't know what are you... Me cussing that person, me bringing that person down, is not going to make no difference. For me... I only spew eight. And now I got to answer to God for what I've done. Yeah. So those are why I said, even people that does anal crime, like killing, you know, in the supermarket, like many families and stuff. We look at them and we say, you deserve death. You deserve death because you took the lives of many innocent people. And by law, it's like you deserve death. So the judge is going to judge him in the earth. And he's going to be pain. For what he did. That's physical. But the judge above God. Will give him that eternal judgment. For all those souls. He taken out of this world. That's where I said. You don't play God. Because it's a dangerous game you play. If you try. You're not perfect. You're sinful. I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner. How dare I look upon another man's sin. Whether it's considered big or great. And say. Just saying, just saying. That's why I always tell unsaved people, don't call out church folk because you're a big hypocrite. Because you're a sinner. So what makes you different? We're both sinners. I One is in and out. I was about to say, with, with that, I guess the reason why I feel that way because I think deep in my heart, like I wouldn't, um, like I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't do such a thing. Right. Right. So, like, um, so, like, I feel like, I don't know, like, it's, I guess, I, well, Listen, here's an important time where, like, we all do ill stuff in, in in our lives, but I'm not, I don't want to say big sin and little sin, but it's like... But it's like big sin and little you know, you, sin, though. Like, I don't have, in, like, I say, like, like, all, oh, like, you will never hear, I would say you will never hear me saying, like, I, I raped a girl, you mm -hmm, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and that, um, and, and, um, I don't... And so it's stuff like that. It's like I, I feel like I have heavy judgment because that is like anal. You know, that that the stuff is. It's not like you accidentally do something. Mm -hmm. Some stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it, so it's like um, so that's where the judgment in me happens. And like even with people like that, I know like people like that will could, could turn their life around and give, give their life to the Lord. Look, I, I know I know there's a um, there's a story with um, Paul. Like, like, saw, like before he was saw and he was killing people, he was killing all the Christians. But then the Lord changed his life. He became a Christian himself. But I, I remember telling Anit, like, yo, there gotta be some hatred with this dude. Like, I'm pretty sure 
the Christian community didn't, uh, oh yeah, didn't, 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 didn't go right with it. I don't know if the Bible touched on this or not. No, it did. I felt, it did. No, I know. I mean, like how the people felt. Like, no, it like, did. Like, like I would feel like one of them people probably had to wanted probably tried to take his own take that dude's life. It did. Go back to that story and read it, but keep reading the, the scriptures after that because it did. Oh. The, the people were very much like what? Because you gotta think about it. There's a side of us that's human. It's natural for you to see a raper or hear about a raper and feel like you want to automatically hate him. Mm -hmm. But what it is, is that it's not your place to do because your God has called you to forgive. He called himself the judge, not you. So that means it's not your burden to bear. Sometimes we get up and we pick up these burdens. Like, well, I'm not going to pick up the shooter's burden and he could kill 12 people or 10 people or 20 people. Guess what? He killed them. It's devastating. It's terrible. I'm praying for that family. We're sharing the information now. We're, we're giving condolences. And if you're a person that's attending the funeral, you're going to go and do what you, your part physically. But that judgment for him, there's nothing I could say to give him what I feel in my heart he deserves. Because it takes so many lives. You deserve to be going down. That's my judgment. But I have no power to truly judge man. That's why we have the law here. We have the judiciary system and we have all these other systems. Where there's order and structure. The kingdom of God does have order and a structure as well. So on that day, God will judge every man. And if, when you do, and if you repent genuinely, it's not that you will not suffer the repercussions of your sin. When God forgives you, doesn't mean you ain't going to jail. Hello? Hello? When God forgives you, doesn't mean you ain't going to jail. Especially when you have done the time. But what I've known is that when you have repented and you started to even do the time or you have done the time, what I do know, I've seen God favor on people while they're doing the time. Favor that they didn't deserve. All because they recommitted to God. And God has now started working for them on their behalf and in their current situation. Honestly. So I see God work for Sasha. Sasha's in jail. But God's favor is upon that girl. In jail. And while she's in jail, God is using her to minister to other people as she rededicated her life to him. And she ministers God to people. God has a plan for everybody. And it's not for evil. It says, you know, that you will prosper even as your soul prosper. God don't want you to broke down and don't have nothing. He wants you to have. He wants you to be blessed. However, some people get caught up in the blessing and they don't get caught up in the God who provides the blessing. And that's the part. He wants to have a love relationship with us. A good friendship with us. Just like how you be loyal to me. You run from me and rock with me. If I'm hurting, you're going to be here. God wants the energy you will give me and more. Because he is above an eek. Alright? So that's how we look at it. And we got to make sure we keep our hearts pure and clean. Deanna, baby, how are you, sweetie? Um, and everybody in the chat, hope your day is well. Guys, it's your girl, Anika, and it is Chit Chat TV, because over here we had the hard car, talk, real talk conversation. Listen, this was unplanned conversation today, but I feel like it was a good one. Yeah. And I appreciate Willie for always being there as my friend, guys. Please, if you're here, Mona, big up a nice clean self. If if you're here and you're not subscribed to my YouTube, please ensure to subscribe to Chit Chat TV, Hard Talk, Real Talk Reality on YouTube. We want to get to 8K. Please, guys, get us there. We only have 7K um, subscribers currently. Please follow me also on TikTok for all the ticket talkers, okay? And also on Instagram. Follow you, good girl, wherever I go. Just so you can join us in these conversations. Just so for everybody who is new here, listen. Believe it or not, the foundation of Chit Chat is an interview-based channel. So we have done many interviews in the past, you know, with people. Those are back, back, back down in the channel as well as some of them are removed and stuff because, you know, when I repurpose the channel, you know, not everything stayed up, right? But if you want to check out some of our um, past interviews, you can see some on this channel as well as on YouTube. You can search just to see what we do, right? If you ever want to share your story, remember, anonymously, you can share it at Chit Chat TV Hard Talk at gmail.com right just know that it will be anonymous your name will not be called but if you have a story or a testimony that you want to give to the crowd guess what and you want me to you know take it out to the shadows and you want to hear their comments on it guess what shot me an email at chita tv hard talk at gmail.com right guys you know confidence is everything confidential is everything and i don't want y'all to think that I would violate your thing. You know what I'm saying? Best live of 2024 so far. I watched in silence most times. Oh, I appreciate you, darling, Lee. You want to say anything to the oh, chat before you go? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Hey man, I I, I, I appreciate y'all. I'm getting shy. You getting shy? Put <laughs> well, the camera on his face now. <laughs> but no, I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you, thank you guys. I, I appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart, man. I wish I could uh get you know kind of get to know y'all. Maybe uh I don't know. I got we gotta do this a lot more often. Yes, we got to. I just don't want to push you out of what you want. But today mm -hmm. it was comfortable, mm -hmm. and I don't want you know to push you and be like, oh, well, you gotta come. But authentically. It just fall into place. Yeah. And when you have good relationship with people, you don't have to pretend. You don't have to come on live and put on some weird energy. You just know who you are. You understand? And this is literally how me and Willie is. And I thank God for you. Keep holding your head up. And you know I'm going to rock with you, period. And that's on Periana to the Piri A. Okay? Shout out to Remember, um, to be considerate in everything we do. We are not perfect. However, we should be working towards perfection, which is maturity in the scriptures. Work towards doing better and being better. That if I die, that my footprints will not be forgotten. Okay? If I die, even if I die young, that whatever I've done, I have, I was able to bless people's lives. Alright? And please, I'm asking you guys to share this live while you're here. Don't let me have to beg you out to please share this live also. We can get the views so people can feel, you know, a part of this conversation too. Alright? I love you all and you have a good and a wonderful day. It's chit-chat. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>